Hi, welcome to Kelly Talks. My name is Kelly Lorraine, and I'm here to talk to you about all things spirituality. Now, today with me, I am blessed to have psychic medium Pam Sears. Thank you, Pam, for being here. It is an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, Pam, we have so many things to talk about. We had a meeting the other day just to roughly go over some things. And we just went on and on with each other about all these different topics that I know relate to us, to our followers. It's it's amazing the world of spirituality and where it can take us. And um, mm -hmm. I love the fact that you've had such an interesting life filled with hospice work, psychic mediumship, massage therapy, you must have seen so much in your time as a hospice worker and what you do now. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you're currently doing? Um, I retired from the massage uh, aspect of it. I, I'd done that since I was mm -hmm. 40. Okay. So mm -hmm. it was time to let some of the younger ones um, take control of that because I felt guided to actually move up North mm -hmm. and, Trying to be a little more isolated uh, during COVID. I came up here and I thought I was just going to volunteer at my sacred place as a park ranger, but it ended up um, being a TikTok uh, thing. I didn't want to do TikTok, but it was push, push, push. So I'm currently, besides my volunteer work, I'm currently working on another book and I'm doing my psychic medium work. I love that, Pam. I mean, we connected through TikTok almost, I would say, maybe three years ago at this point. I can't even pinpoint mm -hmm. the date. It's a little bit of a blur to me because I also never knew that I would end up on TikTok. I never right. knew that that's where I would start. I kind of just woke up one day and said, I'm going to do this. And that's mm -hmm. how it all began for me. So we've been friends online for a while and we share yeah. so many people in common. And it just seems that we're part of the soul tribe. And so very fortunate to have seen about your books. Uh, you just did a children's book, which I think is absolutely wonderful. Uh, I did. You have your own oracle cards. I love the heart rocks, by the way. I love Thank heart rocks. That's just such a such a beautiful, beautiful symbol. Um, so I, I I just love the things that you do. I think it's important to know before we continue, what is your astrology? What is your sun, moon, and rising sign? Um, uh, my sun is Aquarius. My moon is in Libra. Mm -hmm. My rising sign is Cancer. Okay, so you and I have the same moon sign, which doesn't surprise me. I think we share a lot of similarities to each other. And I also think that Virgos and Aquarius do have similarities too. I would say that we're both analytical or we like to mm -hmm. know things, you know, but at the yes. same time, we are very much givers, you know, and notice I said givers, there's a difference between the giving and the over giving, which is what I talk about often in my videos, how right. I'm sure as well as, as myself, you've probably learned throughout life, the importance of filling your own cup, not always over giving to others. Because if you think about it, you know, massage therapy, you're providing something that is healing to other people, you're using your energy to help others, you know, and so it's, it's yeah. nice to help others. But at the same time, you have to take care of yourself too. And that's the same thing I believe with mediumship, and even tarot reading and the counseling that I do, we have to protect our energy as well. You know, what is right. your way to, you know, decompress after a day of mediumship or, you know, helping others? What do I you do? go for hikes. Yeah, you love nature. Um, I have to get out in nature, preferably near water. We mm -hmm. have quite a few beautiful lakes here. There's little streams. Um, and sometimes if it's, you know, in the summer, I'll just put my feet in the water um, and just I be away from people. I like to hike where there's yeah. nobody else, if at all yes. possible. And yeah. I like to just get out of my own way mm -hmm. and just allow myself to be in, in the moment. I think that's wonderful that you said that to be in the moment. I think that's the one thing that we often forget. 
you know, we're so worried about yesterday or what happened in the past. And we're always analyzing about the future, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. And being in the present moment is really important. And I agree with you because I love people and I love talking. Everybody knows I'm quite the talker. You know, I could talk about any topic imaginable. <laughs> but when I do have my downtime, I'm surprisingly quite quiet. You know, right. I don't mind being on my own. I can be a bit of a homebody. I do love to get out in nature as well. I do have a, a, a sacred place too that I love to go to that has a little river and I can just be in that nature. I also really like salt baths with, you know, Epsom salt or Dead Sea salt where I can just yes. completely, completely decompress, you know? So, you know, I, yeah. I, I agree with you. And, and somebody said something about... You used to be the social butterfly and such an extrovert. And, you know, in all this time, I think I, they, they, I think we're called an ambivert. Yes. I use that term often. Yes. Ambivert. Introverted extrovert. And so yes. I have my moments when I'm doing my volunteer uh, park ranger stuff, I can be my extrovert, but then I can go home and I can be that introvert. Mm-hmm. I do think that that's really important. I mean, let me ask you a question. I know it's a very broad question, but how do you define your energy? You know, um, years ago when I was really into some really heavy duty healing work for people, mm -hmm. including hospice and in my massage practice. And, you know, I was a cranial sacral therapist as well. Mm -hmm. Somebody Amazing. said to me, your energy is soft. You mm -hmm. have a soft, just like a, a glowing, a little glowing soft river, because that's what healers, that's what they are. Mm -hmm. And then you have those who, uh, for lack of a better word, are protectors or, you know, their energies can be very, very intense. Mm -hmm. But those are the protectors who sort of protect the healers if that makes right. sense and they're supposed yeah. to be intense so they just said you have a soft soft flowing energy and I thought oh well thank you I mean we don't often realize our own energy no we don't other people like to tell us in a way who we are because sometimes we just don't know how we present to others how we speak to others so it's always important to be self-aware and to take mm -hmm. the feedback from other people. I think yes. that's really important. It's not always easy to do, but I always believe that if it's given in a very loving way or gentle way, I find that it can be really beneficial. I think that's something I learned from teaching and how I incorporate that into my practice. And I feel like you have the same thing. And what I mean by that is when I was a teacher in the classroom, I had to give feedback every single day. And there were days where students were struggling with, you know, not doing well on a test or a project or, you know, I don't know, having having unfortunate situations at home in which they would act out in the classroom. And I would have to manage all of these situations uh -huh. and the way in which I responded dictated how things would progress or sometimes not progress right? It's all learning experiences. And I think that that's something that's very important in regards to tarot readings or psychic readings, mediumship. I think that your softness is really needed and it's compassion. And on top of that, I think what's right. important is to realize that just because one has a soft energy, you know, they always said like, don't mistake my kindness for weakness. It's right. not a weakness. You know, sometimes people would say to me, Kelly, you're too nice or you're too understanding. And my gift, and I'm curious if you have the same thing. I've always described this as my Libra moon. It's that I can understand why people do what they do, even if I don't agree with it, which oh, means yeah. I have a softness about me. I'm not going to get angry necessarily. It's going to take a lot for me to get angry, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I have to be able to understand in order to push things forward. Now, you and I both had the Libra moon and I believe Mars and Scorpio, which is interesting. That makes me wonder if you have that, you know, balance, that softness, and then it takes a lot if you were to ever really react. I mean, there's there's people that sometimes, you know, when I'm doing uh, my social media thing, and there are times, I, you know, my spicy side comes out. It, yeah, yeah. 
you know, it's just like, oh, and people are like, oh, we love that other side of you, you know, because yeah. you're always so sweet and kind. And yes, and that's genuine for me. But, you know, it's like, don't don't tick me off or or don't be rude and mean and disrespectful because mm -hmm. then the spicy side comes out. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I totally get it. And you know, it's funny you say that. I've had a few people in my day say, Callie, I would love to see you angry. <laughs> Because they don't see me in that way, right? They're like, I would like to know what you're like when you're angry. And I always say, well, don't mistake my kindness for weakness. I mean, I I, I can certainly uh, have a spicy side too if I need to, but I really don't ever get there because I don't need to. I can diffuse it enough yes. beforehand. But again, it is there if needed. So it was interesting. Somebody <laughs> had come into my life right at the time when I was, you know, talking to somebody about their rudeness, their disrespect. And they said, you know, you're, you're, you're acting angry. And I said, don't mistake my anger for boundaries. Right. hundred percent, hundred percent. Boundaries are the topic of conversation every single day. And let me ask you a question, actually, just from a psychic medium standpoint, you know, what are the boundaries within mediumship? Because I don't think people always recognize how important boundaries are and consent is in regards to mediumship. I mean, when we spoke the other day, you know, it was not meant to be, um, you know, a reading or a session in that aspect. And you right. said to me, hey, listen, can I say something to you? Do I have your consent to share? And I really respected that because I think in the world of social media, you know, we have to really be aware of boundaries when we're we're looking for answers or engaging with any professional uh, on these topics. So, you know, ethics are vital. All yes. right. Um, you know, I know that they have a lot of uh, uh, mediums in in the in the uh, out in the world on TV. Yeah. You know, yes. for, on the forefront. Uh, do some of them go out there and maybe not ask for consent? I think it's just, it's theatrical. So right. it's kind of different, but still there is ethics. And I do not go out in public and start spewing mm -hmm. information. In fact, mm -hmm. um, when I'm not working, spirit knows I'm not working. Right. Okay. I have yes. my own boundaries with my guides. Like yes. I'm not working. Um, you know, like something may uh, pop in as I'm out and about. That doesn't mean I just go up to somebody and say, Hey, I have your grandma here. Um, right. She wants to give you a message. We don't know where that person is at in their emotional state. Right. Maybe they're a non-believer. Maybe they're just not ready and they're not emotional. And maybe they didn't get along with grandma, you know, right. and yes. it is so unethical yes. to go up to somebody and say, oh, I got this information. And when I go live on any of my social media, if uh, somebody's illuminated to me and they all know that they want because they give me who they want to connect with, I ask them, do I have your consent? Yes. And I really and respect. Like, yes. Consent is so important. And as a psychic medium, we are to leave people better than when mm -hmm. we found them. Right. I the love that. Fear mongering, you know, uh, that's another issue with, you know, yes. alleged psychic mediums. Fear mongering, what is the point? Right. We yeah. are there to bring comfort, bring some validation, and help them feel better than when they started. Most people, when you're asking for a session, you have this hurt, you have these wounds, you have this grief, and yes. you're looking for answers. You're looking for validation that your loved one goes somewhere. So the fear mongering and the, oh my gosh, you know, you've got this energy around you and you need to pay me more money so that we can clear it. There's a right. lot of that out there. Unfortunately, and I think that you and I are very similar in this philosophy that when I have somebody in front of me, I give them my all in the time that I have them. It's not about giving them just enough so that they come back. You know, I'm looking to give my all in that time. And if Correct. somebody wishes to come back to me, that's wonderful. 
it's not a solicitation from me to say you have to come back to clear right. this to do that to do right. whatever i don't chase right right so right. i think that a, a reputable person will respect those lines and give their all that they can yes, yes. you know so Correct. it's it's it, it's tough out there when there are a lot of scammers or there are a lot of situations that um will try this to light encourage more. <laughs> got a crazy is light, light here crazy is, the light, is, the light light is it flickering it was flickering um and so when when they say oh can i come back and have another session like in a month no the answer is no yeah. you've given i've given everything you need right now okay I tell them you have to wait at least six months to a year. I mean, right. don't be hopping around from psychic to psychic, medium uh -huh. to medium until you get maybe answers that you want to hear versus right. what you need to hear. And right. so, you know, yeah, I, you're, I'm like you. You're going to get my absolute all during this uh -huh. session. Yes. Love that. Pam, how did you know you had this gift? You know, um, as a wee one, as a child, um, I didn't know anything about spirituality or guides or uh, loved ones crossed over. I was just always getting input. There was always people talking to me. And um, I would, I'm a chatter. I mean, I, you can't shut me up. And my mom would say, there she, there she goes again. Who, who are you talking to? You know, and I'm like, they're just, I don't know. I don't know. But during that, and I didn't know what it was. I just thought I was kind of crazy talking to myself. Mm -hmm. And I came from a very violent background, very I'm violent sorry. household. And, you know, during that time, I tried to like just shut myself off from the world and everybody. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really able to shut that part off fully. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And then as I got older, it's interesting because I always knew, but I just never shared with people. They would like, how'd you know that? Or where did that come from? And it was in my mid thirties mm -hmm. that all of a sudden I, you know, the voice was, it's, it's time. Interesting. It, it's, it's it, time it, to, yeah. You know what I said to you the other day, Pam, and I say to everyone, and I'm, I'm going to make a video about this at some point. It's the 35 range for women that mm -hmm. is the most pivotal. And I yes. can't explain it. It's where we have our first major tower moment. And it sort of comes when we're ignoring or we're not sort of seeing things that the universe are sending to us. It's it's just something where it, it's like it just clicks. And it's yes. not easy. It's not easy. But it just yes. sort of sparks you, as I always say, into something new and different. And it all depends on how we respond to it. So when you say to me, okay, in my 30s, I'm not surprised. Right. Right. And and that, you know, that began to like, you know, it was still a slow process for me. I was yeah. a new mom. Yes. Um, you know, and and it broke wide open when I got fired from my corporate job, which I didn't mm -hmm. want. The corporate world but you know what benefits you know yes. uh taking care of children and <clears throat> when i was guided to go to massage college is when it just it, everything just cracked wide open i can imagine i can imagine would that be because in a way you're working on clients various people and taking in their energy or feeling is that what kind of made you connect even more it, absolutely in fact what happened was when i was doing my massage work all of a sudden i'm already in their energy field and then the messages just started mm -hmm. happening yeah and so mm -hmm. I, I always put it separate there's this that happens and then there's massage that happens yes and spirits like no we're going to do those together together yes. Um, and I mean, I had no idea what was coming for me when I started my practice. Things happened that were just unbelievable, you know, aha moments that you can't, mm -hmm. 
you know, well, you you're can't like, no, you can't unknow. I always feel like with a spiritual journey, once you see things or once you know things, you cannot go backwards. Like I have a friend, we, we would always talk about this, you know, we'd say, would you want to go back to a time when you didn't know? And I say, no, because I can't unknow what I know, or I can't unsee what I see. You know, sometimes we, 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 we want ignorance as bliss, but I, I don't think that's really bliss. Now, can I share a really cool, I've got yeah. many, but this is a really cool story that happened to me in the beginning of my practice. I'm a yes. massage therapist. This is what I do. I'm only a massage therapist. And I had this elderly gentleman show up. I've never seen him before. New new client. I worked with doctor's offices. So they would schedule people with me. They didn't know who he was. It was just a new person. So I remember looking at him. He had the white, white hair, but his eyes were so crystal blue that I'd never mm -hmm. seen anyone with those colored eyes. So he comes in for the massage and he's talking about hurting his arm. So I'm having him face up so that I can assess the arm. Mm -hmm. And he says to me, we're going to do something different today. And I, I was taken aback, like, who is the massage therapist here? Yes. Yeah. I, and he kept trying to talk to me about how he wanted me to place my hand. And I was just like, I'm, I'm doing i don't know what you're talking about my guides kept saying humor the guy you know mm -hmm. would you just mm -hmm. listen and i thought you right. know what he's not going to shut up i may as well listen so what he did was i want you to place your hand above this area and i want you to close your eyes and i want you to feel for the different energies that are happening because he did he had a uh a sprain or something within that arm. And I thought, okay, the sooner I get this done, the sooner it's over with, right? So I did begin to place my hand and it was so weird because I felt the cha a change mm -hmm. as going from here. And I'm like, what was that? And he said, okay, I want you to move, begin to like feathering and moving things out. And I thought, okay, right. so I was in the zone. I was in the zone and I was moving this out. And as, as this was happening, I said to him, where, who are you? Where did you, where did you come from? I don't even know why I asked that question. Yeah. And he just smiled at me and he said, I'm just a traveler. Oh, wow. And it's time for you to do your work. You so, know, it, wow. It, it, it's funny. Healing. How Yes, yes. I mean, healing comes in so many different forms. That's when I began to do therapeutic touch. And I went and yes. did that certification with the Nurse Healers Association. But like somebody said, you didn't even need to do that. You, you've already born with, we're, we're born with things and we just need to be guided when it's time to use them. Does that make sense? Oh, it totally does. Because I have a a similar story, just not what it didn't happen to me through work. It happened to me going to my local crystal shop and okay. I made friends with the owner of the crystal shop. Uh, lovely, lovely lady. And I happened to go in there to visit her one day and there was a man in the store and I believe his name was Tony. And I talked about this in the story of, of how I, you know, found my, my, my spiritual reawakening, as I call it. I don't believe we are awakened suddenly. I think we're born right. awake. I think life just gets in the way. And then all of a sudden we have those tower moments and then boom, you know, the reawakening happens. I but agree. I, I was in the, I was in the crystal shop and there was this man, I never met this man. And I think the owner of the shop got busy with another customer and Tony started talking to me. <laughs> Tony said, can I tell you something? And I said, okay. And he basically said, look, you need to start your YouTube promise me you're going to start a YouTube. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Like I hadn't even thought yet really about my TikTok or Instagram or YouTube. I knew that I needed to do something. I knew that I was being guided. And he even said, can you promise me by this date, you will start your YouTube. And what's kind of funny about my YouTube history is that this isn't my first YouTube channel. I had one previously, and that was the one that Tony inspired me to start. Okay. And, 
And I said to him, okay, Tony, I keep my word. I will start that YouTube channel. And I didn't know him. He didn't know me. But he told me in that moment that he felt a very strong power from me and that I was going to do really great things and that I need to use my voice. I need to put that out there to help people. And so I did start it. And what I thought was interesting was I wasn't totally sure what I wanted to do, even though I knew I wanted to do something. So I started making a few videos. And yes, I did gain subscribers. It, it, it's not like I, I didn't but I didn't really have a focus. And so I stopped and I said, okay, I need to kind of just regroup myself. And then interestingly enough, I think maybe a few months, cause I think that was November of that year. Mm -hmm. And then a few months passed, I had gone to the crystal shop again in March of 2021. And the very next morning I woke up and I said, okay, I'm doing this. I started my TikTok, my Instagram, my YouTube, and I had a focus and that is what led me to right now. So it was just a matter of meeting a random stranger who had a certain energy about them, who just yes. encouraged me. And maybe that was just what it was meant to be. It was just meant to be a moment in time where somebody said to you, okay, Pam, do this. And I mean, the and I never saw him again. This particular person, I never saw him again. No, never. I've never seen Tony either. I've never <laughs> seen Tony either. And apparently, Tony was known to walk around the 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 neighborhood, or you know, the, we have a little downtown. It's a very small small town, you know. And he would go to the coffee shop, or you know, people knew him. He would just kind of pop into stores and and places and say hello. I just didn't know him personally until that day, and I've never seen him since. Wow, we we're, we're more alike than we so. realize, I think. No, I, I think so too. And I think that that just sort of like leads us to to taking it as it comes. And funny, before we hit the record button today, I said to Pam, I said, you know, I'm a little bit of a fly by the seat of my pants. You know, I know what I want to do. I know what I want to say, but I'm not really a huge planner. And it kind of reminds me of our stories just now where you know, you can't necessarily plan everything. You right. you, you have an idea, you, you kind of go after it and you see what happens. Like you said, you weren't necessarily planning TikTok. And look at now, you have an amazing online family. You know, everything has just sort of aligned or, or grown. And you didn't imagine that. I didn't imagine that. It just happened because we put the intention out there and we did the work to advance and see where it Correct. takes us. Yes, I, my a friend of mine and I, you know, because right before COVID hit, I had a huge group of music family. We were traveling, you know, we would always go different places. And I, you know, we were all just one big family and our, our bands would all play. That all stopped at COVID. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like you go through these withdrawals. But I think spirit was like preparing me. Yes. And my good friend said, I think that spirit wanted you more isolated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in going to this small town because you look what happened since you moved up there. So yes. I thought I was just going to be this volunteer park ranger. And, mm -hmm. you know, little did I know, boom. And maybe you're like me. There was a time when I, I saw some of the things on TikTok and I'm like, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm going right. to end this. I don't want to do this. I'm yes. not going to stay in here. And spirit was like, don't worry about them. Right. Don't worry. You about just, them. Right. Do you me. just focus on what you do. People need you. And I yeah. thought, all right, all right, all right. I agree with you because I didn't, you know, as a high school teacher, I saw TikTok as <laughs> something different than what I've experienced, you know, because I had so many students imagine, you know, 90 students a day. Uh, you know, talking about their social media. And I, it's not that I was never on social media. I mean, I had my Instagram, my, my, my private Instagram or my, my Facebook or whatever. TikTok was something that I wasn't sure how to venture into. Yeah. And, and, you know, when I did, I realized how much I really love it. And I know everybody has mixed feelings about social media and TikTok in particular, but it's been nothing but positive for me because when I got onto TikTok, I somehow made connections and I don't even know how we made them. Like Pam, I have really no memory of how we followed each other or how we came across each other. When I did my interview with Neil recently, it was the same thing. Neil was doing 
teacher talk. He was doing teacher content. And uh -huh. then I saw him pull out a, a tarot deck one day and, and, and I saw that he was spiritual and I went, Oh my goodness, Neil, you know, you're a teacher. You, you like tarot. You know, we have a lot in common. I have no idea really when Neil and I followed each other, how we right. became friends. I have, it, it's so funny how this happens. And then we, we somehow built these friendships and this family and I've been very fortunate, you know, I don't really have mm -hmm. any trolls per se, you know, every now and again, sure, there's somebody who comes in and who's right. angry at the world or upset about a relationship. And I, and I, and I get that, you know, I have compassion for right. that. At the same time, I always make sure that my energy doesn't invite it. Because when I was in a classroom, it was the same thing. You know, right. I had to pick my battles very wisely or how I was going to react. And I do believe, as I'm sure you do, that when you go into a live, your energy is going to dictate a lot of what comes, you know, yes. if I'm not in good energy, I'm, I'm angry, I'm upset, I'm this, that, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm inviting a lot of that back to me. Now, I'm not saying that I'm always rainbows and butterflies and every day right. is amazing. I'm human, but right. I'm always very conscious of the energy that I put out. And, you know, I think yes. we, as we said earlier about protecting energy or being conscious, a lot of it is being self-aware. And I think yes. that's one of the best tools uh, that we can give people, you know, is how I to agree. be self aware and how to adapt. Now, and, and I've had people come in. I mean, there's been, you know, there's sure. still trolls out there. Yes. And I've had people, you know, come in and say, I don't believe this. I'm skeptical. Yes. But yes. then I say, but I invite you yes. to stick around. I, it's perfectly normal to be skeptical. I mean, there's still moments where I, I'm like, Wow, did that did that really happen? And so the the moments that we love so mm -hmm. much are those people that said, "I wasn't a believer, but yes. after your you know your sessions, I'm now a believer." So <laughs> we're reaching those people that are kind of on the fence. There are those that are just like, "Nope, nope." Well, then go find another live. Well, it's true. And I think that's also a lot of fear. It's a lot of projection. You know, yes. I think that the spiritual world, you know, has so many facets to it, like anything else. You know, let's let's be real. There's going to be good teachers, bad teachers, good massage therapists, bad massage therapists. You know, yes. there's going to be a, a spectrum uh, uh, for every profession out there. OK, Perfect. I Perfect. think I think that, you know, we have to be open minded you know, when we meet somebody, it, it, whether we've had an experience or not in the past, again, we have to be in the present moment. And if I come across you and this is what you do, I can just listen. And if it resonates, it does. If it doesn't, that's okay. Maybe there's, you know, an element of not being ready, or maybe there's a Correct. bit of fear there. I think a lot of it really does come from fear because yes. something that mm -hmm. I've recognized in my work is that, look, we all have positives and not so positive things about our Zodiac signs or our Zodiac placements, our birth chart, but certain signs more than others are, I think more in fear of their spirituality. And again, it depends on life experience. I notice a lot of people when they were children, saw things, heard things, felt things, but they pushed it away. I and agree. I agree. You know, because age up till about age seven, they say, you know, a child's brain is so creative and so innocent and that's why sort of life changes you know what I mean as in it, it programs us and we're we're sort of told sometimes to push that away and that's why the beauty of children and their innocence and their creativity they see things I mean just think of how when a child draws a picture we have no idea what that picture is but that child can tell you every detail and they'll have a story for days about it I agree. And you know, that you know, you were talking about my book. And that was one of the reasons why Spirit guided me to write my children's book yes. about my grandson who meets his spirit guides. Because mm -hmm. our little ones, they're so open. And yes. I uh my editor said, let's put a section in the back for parents. Yes. If parents would stay a little more open encourage yes. the children rather than saying, oh, that's just a make-believe friend or whatever. I think that children would, would stay open. Mm -hmm. I think so too. I yes. just think we're not always encouraged to do so, you know, and, that, no. and that's 
Well, and I hate to say that as a former teacher, but that's also the school system. You know, I find that the pendulum has swung many times over the years. And I remember being in kindergarten and playtime was so important. Creativity was important. And then all of a sudden the curriculum changed to what I would have learned, for example, in grade six, they're doing in grade one. And we're sort of like putting all this pressure earlier and earlier for memorization yeah. and, and, and content. And yes. I that that's actually built more anxiety and worry in our youth, young adults, you know, I've never seen so much um, stress in our in our young people. And I so agree. I'm a believer of the inquiry model or, or, you know, passion projects where we're asking questions. It's OK to ask questions. It's OK to search for those answers, compile that information and turn it into something. But it's like everybody wants to go from point A to point B like this without doing the questioning without doing right. you know the work and and sometimes it's this instant gratification that we see in media or you know other aspects of our life that takes away from the beauty of creativity and asking yes. and seeing how things play out because really that's what life's all about it's going to play out you know so I think that's coming full circle to what we were just talking about when someone's looking for answers, whether that's a tarot reading or whether that's um, a mediumship session, you know, we're looking for answers, but sometimes we have to be aware of, you know, are we going to multiple people? Are there too many chefs in the kitchen? Are we trying to force an answer or are we going to take the information and let it sit? I mean, the other day when we spoke, I wasn't anticipating that we would talk about a few things in my own family or my own history. And just those few little nuggets made me reflect and say, oh, what about this? Or or what about yes. that? You know, and I think that's what it almost should be. It should sit with us a little bit and see what pops up and let it unfold naturally. I mean, I think that's what trusting the process is. And I'm always saying that word or that phrase. And yeah, it triggers people. People tell me all the time, They say, especially the ones who've been with me now for about three years, they say, Kelly, when I first heard you say trust the process, it triggered me. Now I understand it. Now yes. I've listened long enough where I'm understanding your story or how this has played out in the last few years that I've known you that yeah trusting the process yep. actually brought me more than me trying to force anything correct forcing you know there's a timeline you know we've got yeah. this divine timing and i do agree yes. that certain um we have to it's like an in increments and yeah. if it's not time we're just wasting energy and so I would prefer to say like I did not I didn't force this move I didn't force being mm -hmm. on TikTok. I mean, I knew that I wanted to move and I knew I was going to, I didn't, I ended up someplace that I didn't know I was going to end up. Let's put it that right. way. Right. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Um, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you is, um, oh, I've just lost my train of thought, actually. That's oh, cool. damn. My, ex you know, it's so interesting. Very rarely do I lose my words, but there was almost like something that sort of came through. And I'll tell you what it was that kind of it got me. I started noticing the, oh, now I've got a call coming through. Pardon me, a call just came through. But the color of the of the light around you just really stopped me for a second. The green, the green light over your shoulder. Uh-huh. Something came to me about that green light and funny that the call, a call just came through the moment that I was just sort of stopped for a second. And so there was something to do with like the heart. I was feeling something in regards to, because green is heart chakra. Right. So I don't know what that was or who that was for, but <laughs> Maybe it stopped when, me. When I get a call trying to come through when I'm on a session, I always say somebody needed that energy. Yeah, like it just pulled me for a second. And, and anybody who's watched me knows I don't typically lose my words or my train of thought. I had this question, but like for whoever that was, it was like a, it was something to do with the heart. It was, it was like maybe somebody felt something in their heart. I don't know, but it just really like, whoa, <laughs> it just came from, yeah. So I don't know, maybe it'll come back to me. But what I was going to say, Pam, is 
Who shuffles your cards? Who shuffles my cards? It's a loaded question. And I, and it's funny. It's, because it's not loaded. It, it yeah. makes perfect sense. And, you know, I was just saying, um, I was just saying this to a client. Okay. Mm -hmm. when, when I do mediumship, I like to go ahead and shuffle cards from different decks. I don't look at them. I just put them down when, when the mediumship is over, you know, I'll kind of share the cards and it's like, if I'm shuffling my own cards, that's my higher self. Right. Okay. My guides. When I'm shuffling cards for others, mm -hmm. um, it's their guides. It could be their loved ones at times. Not, not, you know, everyone has a part of this. Now there was the, the client that I had, there was something about the dad that came through and there was something so healing for that mm -hmm. person. And when I pulled the card over, it was exactly what the dad had said, even though I don't look at the cards. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot of times the loved ones have a part of that shuffling. The guides have a part of that shuffling. Um, you know, it is so important to me that I, and I'm talking to myself all the time. And, I, you know, come to think of it when mom kept saying, why are you talking to back then? If I would have understood higher self, I would have said, I'm talking to me. Yes. Talking to my hair self. And so yeah. it's like, I'm always getting that, that input, you know, from my higher self. So I'll, you know, if I need a card, I know that my higher self is going to be doing the shuffling. So and maybe the shuffling, depending on what you need or what I'm doing, could be a, a, a number of things, higher self, guides, your loved mm -hmm. ones may have a part of that. Does that yeah. make sense? No, it, it really does. I mean, what would be your advice for somebody that is struggling to connect with somebody who has passed? For example, you know, a parent or, or in general, a loved one, because sometimes I have people ask me those questions too, you know, and, and I, of course, am very connected too. And I do get a lot of messages. I don't practice that in my, in my right. session, but I do, I do certainly have things that come through. Like just a moment ago, I don't know who, I really don't know who that was for. It was something very strong that just came to me. And maybe I'll know later when I've had a bit of time to decompress, but right. I think you I would, will. I would say that, you know, people sometimes feel like if they're not getting signs or they're not connecting that there's something wrong and they take it very personally or they're, they're hard on themselves. What do you say to people when they're trying to connect, but they're not really feeling it? You know, I, I tell them that our loved ones, one of my phrases I like to give is they don't miss us because they're with us. Right. And I tell them, if you get out of your own way, Mm -hmm. Okay. I like to connect with my loved ones out in nature. Um, yes. I said, things can be ever so subtle. Yes. It doesn't have to be a rainbow or a cardinal or anything like that. I mean, obviously pay attention if you're getting songs repeated, repeated numbers. Of course, sometimes yeah. repeated numbers are from guides, but I say they do hear you. They do hear you. And you don't need me or, or anybody to actually connect with your loved ones. And I say to them, um, I, you can be specific and you can ask your loved ones, hey, I really this is important. I really need such and such. I always like to use the phrase in my face. Bring me something in my face. But I also remind them that didn't you just say you had a whiff? of like their perfume and it, it was gone and you didn't think anything of it until we had our session though you know we do get signs I think that we just want them so bad that we don't realize the beauty of that subtle oh mm. that just happened or what I wonder what made me think of my mom at that time your mom is there it's uh, very true. And I'll share something um, that I didn't say in the moment, but I'll, I'll share it now for, for all of you. And that is when you mentioned your light, your light was flickering. That was an automatic thought of my father, because when my father passed away almost two years ago now, uh, the next morning when I got up to get ready to go to the funeral home, I said to my dad, dad, give me a sign. Let me know you're with me. Show me something. 
And within, it wasn't even a minute. My light bulb was going crazy and talking to me. I even filmed it and I showed it to my mother, my sister, you know, even at the, at the burial, when it, when we, when we got there, I, I was like, this is my dad because that light bulb had been acting up even just before he passed. And I had never touched that ball. Actually that bulb had been out for like weeks. Okay. And my, my father was in, in, in hospice or palliative care for, um, I don't know, probably about at least a month before he actually passed, but there were things about this light bulb and then boom, that light bulb kept talking to me for months after he passed. And so this was my way to to add add another light because this one was flickering and then it kind of dimmed. And I'm like, you know, I, so I turned on another light, but, but you're right. It was, and it was boom. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that, that your dad was popping in to say, you know, I, I like to call those things like little little postcards, like, hi, yeah. I'm yeah. here and I'm around. And, you know, and it does happen sometimes when I am communicating with people, a loved one does show up. Like you said, it's not ethical to go spew things. Yes. But people, you know, I'll just say, you know, if I ha- if I happen to have, if I happen to get something for you, because most people know that's what I do. Yes. You know, would that be okay? Do I have your consent? And um, recently, just be, for instance, I went to go, I had to do a test and I had mm-hmm. to, speaking a test, it was like a heart test. Mm-hmm. And I went to the hospital because in this rural town, that's where you go for things. Right. And I remember going into the building and I'm like, shields up, shields up. I don't believe that spirits roam halls or anything like that, right. but there is residual residual energy Mm -hmm. so to make a long story short um the this tech we were just sitting there talking before and we were talking about you know life and what what did I do and I told her I was a psychic medium and she said oh my god do you get anything for me I you know I said well I'm not really here for that and she goes oh no please I said if if something happens do you have you know do I have your consent I didn't think anything would happen and Mm -hmm. as it was her 13 year old son came through at that point. And she said, you don't understand. I wanted to believe in this type of thing, but I didn't believe I wasn't supposed to be here today. I was supposed to be at another location and they switched me to go to this. And so when your loved ones want to try to relay a message, they're, they're going to find ways to put Mm -hmm. people in our path. Is that, no, you, you I, have I, the same thing. Yeah, you have the 100%. same thing. You. Yeah, I do. Because I always believe that we meet people for a reason or we're in the right place at the right time. It just happens that way. You know, uh, we get things that, you know, help us. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that every experience is going to be wonderful or we're going to perceive it as such great luck I always think about an old Chinese proverb um, that was basically good luck is bad luck bad luck is good luck and sometimes you you might think something is is absolutely wonderful you know and it didn't end up being something you you really enjoyed or something you know that that you didn't think was so great turned out to be the best blessing you had ever had so sometimes you know we are put in positions where it's what we needed, not necessarily what we wanted, but what we needed. And I think that's the whole aspect of spirituality where things happen for us, not to us. I agree. And, and that can be very hard for people because sometimes you'll hear, well, why did this happen to me? Or why me? Why me? Why me? Uh, maybe it's because that's what is needed. And we can't try to control everything. The spirit world is not about us trying to control it. We have to remember, you know, we are spiritual beings in a meat suit. You know, we are right. basically living a human experience, not the other way around. And, Correct. you know, that, that can be very tough for people. And I'll, I'll give it one last thought, Pam. And that is one thing I noticed, because you said earlier, you know, wearing orange is like the sacral chakra, Right. And that's that joy and vitality. And, 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 you know, here's me wearing purple, which is, you know, like third eye. And, you know, I think that there are people and there's nothing wrong with this, but there are people who operate in different chakras. You have to remember that some people may be really spiritually connected. 
and they are like operating in these higher chakras and they don't always feel comfortable in daily 3d life because they're so connected and on the flip side you know there are people who are not spiritually inclined or open to the spirituality and they're thinking about building their foundation and their self-worth and self-value and self-respect and making moves and so i think that it's always important for people to remember that we're all operating at times in different chakras or different perspectives, and that's okay. But the bottom line is that we're living in a 3D world. We have to try oh, yeah. to find a way to, to sort of like mesh those energies. And, you know, speaking of color, I, I never know what I'm going to wear. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things like, oh, I wonder why I picked that blue today. I wonder why I picked that purple. Yes. But then I begin to realize because I was working with that particular energy, that chakra during that time. So I did, I don't just go in there. I just let spirit go. Okay. We're going to wear this color today or. I'm the same way, Pam. I I find myself whenever I'm having like the deepest conversations, you know, in my, in my lives or in any videos that I'm doing, it's like, uh, sometimes I find myself like wearing blue. It's like, it's like a mercury kind of vibe where it's like maybe um, an important talk that's needed right. or I'm wearing green, you know, that's the heart chakra or right. oh, I'm feeling very intuitive today. Like everything is just sort of coming to me. I think that color really does have an impact. And, you know, I was mentioning to Pam before we, we came on today that I ordered a deck and I, I haven't reviewed it yet. I will be very soon. I don't know which package it's in. So it'll be spontaneous when I open it. But there's a a deck that I purchased that has a whole color theory to it. And I think it's important that we do pay attention to colors, you know, and what they mean. I always think about that in regards to flowers. You know, they all hold different meanings. And so, you know, there's so much. And there are certain people that say, I will never wear green because I'm not comfortable. Maybe that's the color you need to wear. That's how I see Yes. You know, like, oh, no, I would never do that. Well, maybe that chakra needs a little bit of work and maybe. So I've always said to people, if you don't like a particular color, put it on one day. Just yes, wear it and see where it takes you. But see, this is my point. It's sparking new energy. It's trying something different. It's leaving the comfort zone. You know, people often ask me, how do I change or how do I make moves in life? What does that mean? You know, when you say, Kelly, are you in the old? Are you in the new? Well, what is the new? And it's like, nobody knows what the new is, but we have to try. It's trial and error. And so therefore, try wearing new colors. Go meet new people. Try a new hobby. I don't know, read a different type of book, whatever it is on the smallest of scale. It can be as simple as wearing a different color shirt, you know, or, or just being open to something. And I agree. You, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's just a matter of maybe I'm afraid of this, or maybe I, I, I don't think that I can wear this, but then you wear it and everybody says, Oh my goodness, I really love that. (laughs) You know, you know, for me, I never wanted to wear red. Yes. I never wanted to wear red. I don't know. I, I felt like I was going to be too, too seen too much or, you know, being too bold. But then I began to realize once I'd done some root chakra work, yes. I realized red is a very, very powerful color. And once I became empowered, mm-hmm. I have no problem wearing red. Yes. It's funny you say that because in the Kelly Talks interview that I did with my friend Becca, she wore red and she wasn't wearing red for a long time. And I had mentioned to her that, you know, wow, it looks really nice on you. It's a very, very powerful color. And when we did our talk, you know, she was wearing red. And and I think that there's a lot of truth to what you just said, you know. So I appreciate that feedback. Pam, this has been absolutely amazing. And thank you for your time. So Um, much fun. I I appreciate everything that you do. I know that you have an amazing online family. For those of you that don't follow Psychic Medium Pam Sears, please go look her up on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube. She brings so much to her community. So thank thank you you for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
Well, we'll talk soon, Pam. Thank you to everybody who's been watching. Please let me know in the comments what color you love to wear, maybe a color you're afraid to wear. Let us know if there was anything that came through in this video for you. I'm really curious about that green light around you. It just really stood out at me, that call coming through right away. If that was for any of you, like if any of you felt that, maybe maybe there's a message there. So let me know in the comments. As yes. always, thank you for your kindness and support. And I wish you all a wonderful day and see you next time.